Hi, I'm Mike Chevalier. I'm the Fire Chief of Little Hawking Volunteer Fire Department. And this is an informational video that we're putting on social media to announce and ask for your support for the Little Hawking Fire and EMS levy, which will be on the May 4th, 2021 ballot. Little Hawking Volunteer Fire Department was founded in 1963, and we provide fire and EMS coverage to Belpre and Decatur Townships in Washington County. Our membership currently is 28 all-volunteer members. We handle a call volume of an average 600 runs per year, and our population that we serve in Belpre and Decatur Townships, 5,163 people. We cover a square mileage area of 59 square miles. The background of the fire department is we have one station that located at 99 Tower Road in Little Hocking. We operate three ALS staffed ambulances, we have fire, fire apparatus and one heavy rescue. We also have a dive team that does swift water rescue and dive um, rescue for the area. Current response staffing is all volunteer responders and all on call for fire response. Our EMS staffing is assigned crew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. We have four crews and they are on one out of every four nights. During the day from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., we have an all-call crew, which is just whoever is available to make the run shows and makes the EMS call. Right now, we're relying upon shift workers and retirees to be able to make the bulk of the daytime hour runs. Okay, so let's talk about current funding sources for the Volunteer Fire Department. Currently, there is no fire EMS levy that's collected to fund the department. There's an inside millage from Belpre Township of half a mil. Uh, we have collect a $1,500 a year contract from Decatur Township for fire and EMS. We bill insurance companies, but not individuals. That's called EMS soft billing. And we also obtain funds from the association's fundraising campaigns. And of course, there's donations from taxpayers and customers of our services. Operating costs for the fire department. A typical engine fire apparatus will cost about $600,000 to purchase one new. Ambulance, $275,000. That's just the base cost of the equipment. It doesn't include all the ancillary equipment or supplies that go on that piece of equipment. Some of those ancillary supplies include heart monitor, $34,000. Extrication tools like the Jaws of Life, $42,000. In addition to those costs, we have operating costs for the department, like utilities, electric, gas, IT communications. EMS billing is a service that we have to pay for so that we can bring money in from that soft billing to insurance companies. That's about $15,000 a year. There's standards compliance that have to be considered as well, such as NFPA or OSHA. NFPA mandates that we test things like our pumps to be sure they're in compliance. And there's also general equipment maintenance and insurance costs. Right now we're seeing an increased demand on our members. EMS call volume has been rising over the past few years. Continuing education requirements have also been increasing. For example, for a paramedic, 90 hours are required every three years to recertify. And that's in addition to the amount of hours that are spent to initially get your certification. Health risks to responders have also been increasing and to their families. Examples are C. diff, uh, carfentanil, bed bugs, and COVID. In the slide you'll see with me, there's an example of equipment that we now have to wear just to respond to a suspected or positive COVID call. And then we're also seeing fewer fire calls, and that causes a lack of interested firefighters, right? That excitement for those fire calls, people aren't quite as interested in serving on the EMS side. Other causes of our staffing concerns are, we have an aging volunteer workforce. Right now, we don't have any members on our EMS side under the age of 30. And we've seen an increase in the age of our volunteer members. There's overall a national decrease in volunteerism. Every department's seeing that. We have a change in EMS usage. So what used to be a true emergency only type of organization has now become an all hazards type of organization. And there's also the increase in training requirements that I mentioned earlier and changes in work and family demands. We have less shift workers, more daytime workers, and again, more active families, younger families, coupled with the increase in hours required to maintain certifications, makes it difficult. The current slide shows a transition of our membership in the last 10 years in age. Um, we went from eight members 
uh, in under 20 years old and 14 members under 30 years old to currently we have one uh, that's a firefighter. Uh, you can see in the, col in the blue column, that's the 2010 number for each age group and the red column shows the 2020 levels. This uh, equates to an average age of 2010 and 2010 of 35 and 2020 uh, our average age is 48. Um, our number of personnel went from 38 to 28 and this shows a 26 percent decrease in membership over the last 10 years. Um, we also are showing a 13 year increase in the average age of our members. Our mutual aid departments or surrounding departments uh, are having the same issues. Um, like Chris said, it's a national shortage of volunteers. Um, volunteer fire departments around the country are having the similar uh, issues. Uh, we also have no guaranteed EMS backup in Washington County. Uh, there are mutual aid agreements, but they are for fire. And so our EMS coverage uh, is not guaranteed if we aren't able to make the call. Uh, currently, our membership is uh, capable of making the calls, um, but as these uh, ages continue to rise, there is concern that uh, you know, we may have more trouble making these EMS calls. Uh, currently, uh, during daytime hours, our EMS calls are all call, so we have no set crew on duty uh, during daytime hours. I'm going to talk about personal personnel compensation plan. There's going to be three components to this. Um, it's going to be an on-duty paid EMS crew from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On-call stipend for volunteer EMS from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And volunteer fire EMS paid per call stipend. Daytime on-duty paid EMS will be part-time Belpre Township employees. They'll have a maximum average weekly hours of 28. Locally comp competitive wages, pay based on certification levels, ALS crews given priority, there'll be two personnel per day, no residency requirements from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and one minute tone to en route is what our goal is going to be for this. The nighttime on-call volunteer EMS is going to have rotating nightly crews that will be continued from what we previously do. Um, that's going to be the volunteer members, a nominal on-call stipend paid per night. It's going to be ALS priority. It's going to be a minimum of three personnel per crew. We're going to move this time from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., which defers from our 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. that we currently do. Uh, volunteer fire EMS paid per call. Volunteer firefighters and volunteer EMTs paid nominal stipend per call. It's not based on hours worked. There is going to be a five mile residency requirement for this and we're going to try to make our goal for this an eight minute tone to in route time. So let's take time to talk about what the cost is to the taxpayer uh, of the residents of Decatur and Belpre Township. Um, the average home value for the two townships is 102,800 and at 2.6 mils, which is what we're asking for, uh, that makes the average cost per month $7.80. Uh, you can see in the table shown that we have it broken down uh, in several appraised values that you can convert your uh, home's value into your yearly and monthly cost of the plan. So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about the benefits of this plan that we're requesting. Um, it's going to be able to give us a cost-effective option of being able to provide quality EMS service every day, 24 hours a day. You'll have guaranteed EMS responders on duty 24-7. It'll also help increase fire and EMS recruitment and retention by drawing new people to the fire department to be a part of it. Along with that, with the on-duty crew at the station for 12 hours every day, they'll be here and we'll be able to give faster response times. Our time out of station should re be reduced greatly by having two people here at the station during the day. It also gives us emergency response sustainability where we'll have people that are on paid staff that we'll know are here and we don't have to worry about all calls. And in the end, it'll give us better protection for fire and EMS into the townships. 
How can you help as a resident of Belpre and Decatur Township? We have yard signs available that can be picked up at the fire station any Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We will be going door to door canvassing to get the word out to the residents of Belpre and Decatur Township, and we could use help with volunteers that be willing to do that. We've also got pamphlets that we will be distributing to people with all the pertinent information on it. And we ask you to be a social media influencer, be uh, in favor of this and support the levy. And last but not the least, we need you to go out and vote on May 4th and please vote for the levy. If you have any questions at all, uh, again, my name's Mike Chevalier and my cell phone number is 304-481-3477 and you can call me uh, with any questions or concerns. Thank you. So, after this, listening to this video, if you still have questions, comments, or concerns, we'll be holding upcoming public meetings here at the fire station in the month of April and in early May. Pay attention to social media for those dates to be announced. And on May 4th, please come out and support your fire department in continuing to be able to provide the excellent quality service you've come to know from us and vote yes for this levy. From all of us here at Little Hocking Fire and EMS, we appreciate your support.